what's up my chemistry people, it is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? It's a doozy. We are going to explain the mathematical relationships between and calculate the energy, frequency, and wavelength of visible light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit as always. First thing we're gonna do is describe and interpret this thing called the electromagnetic spectrum. Two, we are then going to calculate wavelength, frequency, speed, and the amount of energy of a photon or a mole of photons of light. And then numero three, we are going to explain the relationships between energy, frequency, and wavelength. Okay, now some of you might be wondering, what in the heck are we doing talking about light? I thought that this unit was all about the electron cloud. Well, it turns out that the new atomic model evolved as a result of the investigation into the absorption and emission of light by matter. And so we're gonna take some time in this video to better understand light so that consequently we can better understand the structure of the atom. Okay, so first of all, what the heck is light? Visible light is a kind of electromagnetic radiation, which is a form of energy that exhibits both wave-like and particle-like behaviors as it travels through space. Sort of this dual nature, wave-like and particle-like at the same time. Now, as you take a look at your screen and also in your notes, you've got an image that represents the electromagnetic spectrum. And you'll see that on the spectrum, we have things like radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. All of these things are types of electromagnetic energy. And as we'll learn, the differences between these types of electromagnetic radiation comes down to what is the wavelength and frequency for these different types of radiation. Now in this video, I'm gonna focus on the visible light part of that spectrum, which is only a really small part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. It's gonna be important that you recognize the order of colors as you see them on your screen. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Most of us are pretty familiar with rainbows, so we already have an understanding of the order of these colors. But if you forget, a great mnemonic device, Remember this guy called Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now, as I mentioned, light and all forms of electromagnetic radiation can act like both a wave and a stream of particles. We're first gonna talk about some of the wave-like properties that visible light possesses. Some of the most important and measurable properties of visible light behaving like a wave is wavelength and frequency. Now, wavelength is just the distance between corresponding points on adjacent waves. Notice we use the Greek letter lambda to represent wavelength. As you take a look at your screen, I've got different colors of visible light. The wavelength again is measured by corresponding points on adjacent waves. In this image, I've gone crest to crest, but you could also go trough to trough. So when it comes to wavelength, red light has the largest wavelength, violet light has the smallest wavelength. The second measurable property of light behaving as a wave is frequency. And we use the Greek letter nu to represent frequency. It is defined as the number of waves that pass a given point in a specific time, usually one second. We often measure that in hertz, hz. So here we go, I've got a fixed point. I'm gonna count for one second and we're gonna think about how many wavelengths have passed that point in that one second. Here we go. One one thousand. Okay, a second has passed. Let's think about how the frequency of these different colors of light compares. Red light, maybe two wavelengths have passed that point in that one second worth of time. Green, one, two, almost three wavelengths of light have passed. And then watch out violet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight wavelengths worth of violet light have passed that point. So when it comes to visible light, red light has the lowest frequency, violet light has the highest frequency. Now, it turns out there's a mathematical relationship that exists between, between wavelength and frequency. And it's provided to you on the screen and also into your notes there. Recognize that all colors of visible light travel through space at the same speed. And the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to 8 meters per second. Again, the speed of light is held constant. Let's think about the relationships that exist between these variables. So let's solve this equation for wavelength. Wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by frequency. C is a constant. In other words, it's gonna stay the same size. Think about what happens then when my frequency increases. Because the frequency is in the denominator when I solve this equation for wavelength, as the frequency gets larger, the wavelength is gonna get smaller. 
Also think about what would happen if the frequency got smaller. Because it's in the denominator, my wavelength is gonna get larger as my frequency decreases. So this sets up an important relationship that you need to understand between frequency and wavelength. The two are inversely related, or as one increases, the other will decrease. Okay, now visible light, turns out, can also behave like a stream of particles or photons. And a photon is just a particle of electromagnetic radiation having zero mass and carrying a specific amount of energy. Now, the photoelectric effect is evidence that light behaves as a stream of particles and not just as a wave. Again, it's not hugely important for this course, but you should know that the photoelectric effect is the reason that we understand light behaving as both a stream of particles and a wave. Now, it was Max Planck who originally suggested, and some guy named Albert Einstein who elaborated on a formula that I'm about to show you that describes the relationship between frequency of light and the quantum of energy or the amount of energy of a photon. So it turns out that the specific amount or quantum of energy that a photon contains can be found using the following formula. Energy of photon is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. Again, as you look at this, E equals energy H equals Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And again, nu stands for frequency. Once again, an important relationship you should understand between the variables that exist in this equation. H is a constant, so it's going to stay the same. As frequency increases, energy is also going to increase. Again, H is a constant. As frequency decreases, energy will also decrease. So energy and frequency are directly related. As one of those things increases, so will the other. And again, I'm gonna start throwing around this word called quantum. And a quantum is just a specific amount of energy, albeit a really, really, really small amount. And it's proportional in size to the frequency of the radiation that it represents. Frequency increases, so will that quantum of energy. As the frequency decreases, so too will the quantum of energy decrease. As we come back to our examples of visible light, I'm gonna count again for one second, one, 1,000. Take a look at the energy values for the different colors of light. Notice that as the frequency increases, as I go from red light down to violet light, energy in joules increases as well. Okay, and lastly, recognize that this energy represents the energy of a single photon. So be prepared to convert those energies absorbed or emitted to kilojoules per mole instead of joules of a single photon. And so before we end for today, important to come back to that recognize we're taking this little time out to talk about light. It was scientists' advancement in the understanding of light that helped us better understand and describe the properties of the electron and their behavior in the electron cloud. Again, think about the electron behaving not only as a particle, but also as a wave. All right, and that's it for today's video. Have a fantastic day.